first off, again, raise your hand if you have not got your book. Right. Hold it just a minute. Cynthia, I got you. Diane. Correct. Yeah, correct. Got you, Diane. Got Francis. Stephen Daly. Stephen Daly got them. Robert Chavis. Robert Chavis, Robert, got you, Robert. Anybody else? All right. Okay, what I would do is this. I'll take this, what I got there, and I, I'm going to email her in the morning. <laughs> this, hold it up, fellas. This uh, right here is who you need to call, Tiffany Worthen. This is her office numbers. You'll get her either direct or get her saved. I mean, get her voicemail. Well, you need probably to talk to her because, you know, the test comes up starting next week, and I know you want, want your new book by then, before then. Uh, so I, I would give her a call tomorrow, okay? And then I'll send one out myself. Uh, the concussion test, the way it's going to work, we've got a filter set up on Arbiter that when you take your test ever so often, right now Mark's out of town, he's putting them on there for us regional supervisors to see who's taking it. As I mentioned last week, a week before last, if you do not take the conduction test by next week, the deadline is the 29th, you will not be eligible to call volleyball high school. Do middle school, rec ball, but you can't do high school. It's very simple. It costs nothing. If you have a question, Arthur and Bruce and, and uh, Chris can help you. You can call them. Uh, Chris had something came up with Ricky. Ricky tried to take it. He, he went over that with him. It's, it's not compatible, right? It's not compatible with a smartphone. You, you take it on a desktop or a laptop, I don't think. I paid. No, I paid. I paid. I paid. I paid. Oh, you did? Okay, well, I, I, I stand corrected. Did anybody use the iPad guy? She said she did. You did. You did. You did. So don't forget this. This needs to be done. The test. We, we don't have any more clinics set up before the test starts. The test starts at 8 o'clock Monday morning. Evening. Uh, Monday, uh, 8 a.m. Monday, 8 a.m. Monday the 25th. Sunday. That's next Monday. It cuts off the 31st, <laughs> Sunday night, <laughs> and five minutes to 12. If you don't take it, ain't nothing I can do to hit you. Remember, you've got to make the 75. Remember, you can sit down with your book and read every question and look up every answer. If it takes you a day and a half, there's no time limit. There's no time limit. <coughs> and, and take the test. You can make a hundred. The main thing to read the setup is for you to learn. Not, not necessarily to see what you know, make sure you know it. Okay? So all they want you to do is learn it. Know it. So the test, you can set out different than going to high school. You can take it right out of your book. Get your answers right out of your book. <coughs> Don't forget, everybody, booking fees, and I'm going to start booking volleyball after this coming weekend. But, and the reason, one of the bigger reasons for it is I'm loading so much of soccer, I want to make sure I go ahead and get as much of that as I can. But I'm going uh, I don't know how many of these went on the old website, but I added a lot more today. If you hadn't been on there in the last couple of days, you look at it. And it's loaded with a lot of stuff, especially when we get into September. These days we got 18, 19 sites of stuff running. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a, if you know of anybody that's interested in soccer, please happen to call me because I need soccer officials bad. Okay? But make sure you get the test, make sure you take your time, do the test, take your time. And make above a 75 or better. If you do not make 80 or better, you will you will be ineligible for tournament play. <coughs> Got to make 80 or, or above. 
If you don't make your scrimmages and all your classes, and just make 80 or 81, you won't be eligible. You won't get enough points. If you make above a 95, you pretty well, you know, no matter how many clinics you make, you usually got enough points. That, that test is, uh, is, a, uh, is a big point getter if you make it up high, real high. And it's, you know, I don't take the test, so I can't say it's very simple. I don't know. But it's, it should be by being able to take it out. Uh, as I said, make sure everybody get in the booking fee. I've only had 18 pay it out of 31 so far. And I'm going to book right down. When I start booking, I'm going to book right down the list. And then, then it'll run into who had to pay. So you do need to get your money in to me. Uh, the concussion test, the concussion uh, as I said, Mark is putting this stuff on there. He's out of town right now in Greensburg doing coaches meetings. He sent me an email, us an email to regional supervisors, and he put them all, everybody that had done it, he put them on there the, through the 12th, I think it was. And I looked it up before I came. Right now, this is the ones that's on there for Mark, and then you can raise your hand if, if your name wasn't given out. Uh, Richard Brand. Jeff Faulkner, Leroy G, Melvin Gray, Arthur Harris, Randy Ferguson, Francis Powell, Sharon Reynolds, and Chris Summer. Is anybody else taking it? Okay, your name will show up on it. Your name will show up on it as soon as Mark gets back. He'll be putting it on. Okay. And uh, matter of fact, I'm gonna put a. I'll put an X by you two, so I know it's it's done. Uh, Anybody got any questions for me before I turn it over? Oh, yeah, let me mention one more thing. I circle this date right here. If you need it for the, your third clinic, it, it won't be held that day. Uh, we're looking at probably going to the fourth. And the reason we're not going to hold it this day, they've got a big function here at South Brown, but we probably wouldn't be able to get in the parking lot. So we don't want to be coming back here and we can't even find a place to park. So this one here, which I will send out an email once we figure out with uh, Don, make sure you're clear with him what our new date is, I'll send out an email. It's probably going to be the fourth. Because I got, I got a football clinic on the third year, so it can't be that. Any, other, any questions? Anything else? Scott. If not? Oh, from Scott. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I don't know how many of you know this, but I'll go ahead and cover it. I've asked uh, Bruce and them to, to an author to kind of cut it around 7, 30, 7 15 to, uh, or thereabouts. Scott Brogdon's sister, Sunday morning, about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, was coming home from work. She works at a rest home, and she fell asleep, they think, mm -hmm. and hit a car pretty well head on. It killed her immediately. They're having her wake right up here at Eats tonight. So I don't know if you, any of you might want to go by or whatever, but I, I know I do, and, and Chris does, and ones might know and might want to run by there. Anyway, all right, fellas. Good evening, everybody. Um, like I said, we don't we don't be here too long. I'm gonna start off with Warren here, let him know some things. Uh, who's he? <laughs> new kid on the block. <laughs> uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, first, I do want to first say uh, thank you for all the uh, condolences, prayers, thoughts, uh, phone calls, everything that you guys did in the passing of my sister. Um, that definitely was a um, trying moment, but I did get all the emails and everything. Um, and thank you guys, thank you, thank you, that meant, that meant a lot. So, um, thank you for that, and I already thank Ronald for the flowers and everything. So, um, thank y'all guys for that. Um, we just want to start off, do anybody got any questions from week before last? Anything that you guys went over? Anybody had any um, confusion or anything? Any? Thing Arthur and Chris and went over from last week. Everybody's good. All right, cool. Um, just want to hit uh, one thing and then we'll jump right into the points of emphasis. Um, 
or the uniform, which I don't think they talked about that last week. But as far as the um, association, we definitely want to um, look professional when we go out there. Um, once again, and you don't have too many coaches complaining about our calls. You may, but in volleyball, it's kind of simmer when it comes to um, coaches and officials and fans and officials. Um, but you definitely want to look up to par when we out on the um, on the court. Um, and if everybody can turn to page 20 real quick in your rule book, page 20, section 3. Page 20, section 3. And this, this should be um, from scrimmages all the way until um, your last game for if it's a regular season or a playoff game. But once again, it should, it should be, everybody should be on the same page with this. Um, everybody knows about the white shirts. Um, I, I believe everybody has a white shirt with the North Carolina logo on it now. Um, Try to make sure that's clean. Try not to have it kind of dingy or dirty. Um, try to you know make it clean as possible. Um, black slacks, um, and we haven't been wearing like short, no shorts, no um, um, like jo jogging pants, or anything like that, sweatpants. Yes, sir. We went over that all last week. Y'all did? Yeah. Over the uniform. Yeah. Oh, okay. Huh? Got a reason. Got a reason. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, I guess everybody wasn't here, but um, definitely um, just trying to stress that because um, even in the scrimmages and doing some of the games, we're not properly dressed. So just make sure the white shirt, um, the black slacks, no um, sweatpants, jogging pants, shorts, anything like that. Um, we all know to have the whistles and definitely have, you know, your yellow cards, your coins, your chain, your watch, and all that. Um, and we'll go over the lot of card in a minute. But make sure we do have that. Um, but I was actually just to kind of hit that specifically. <laughs> oh, you kind of have me telling me on you. <laughs> <laughs> you pay attention. <laughs> you pay attention. <laughs> All right. Um, any questions on that? And like I said, let's definitely just try to look um, professional on that. All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit the um, points of emphasis. And if everybody can check, uh, turn to page 51 in the back. Oh, in the rule book. Rule book, rule book. And we'll kind of go through some of these. And some. the reason why... Um, they put points of emphasis in most of your rule books. There's things that probably occurred last year that just not, <coughs> excuse me, need to put more <coughs> emphasis on. Um, and one of the things, <coughs> and I believe for this one, the first one, intermission reminders. And I believe, and I don't think we have done it, but somewhere in the country, uh, someone has probably been allowing teams to uh, warm up more than the allowed at the time. Anybody know what is what is that uh, allowment time for warm-ups during uh, uh, between sets? Between set. What's the time? What's the time? Three minutes. I mean, not, it's not warm, excuse me, it's not warm-up. Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. So everybody know that your intermission um, time. So it's three minutes. Um, do not give them five minutes. The five minutes, and that's what this is pretty much talking about, the intermission reminders. Make sure we're giving them three minutes. Um, only, uh, and I'm not going to say only, but usually uh, if there's any type of presentations, it's like senior night, or if it's any special type of thing, I don't know what they may do in volleyball. I don't know if somebody got so many digs or whatever. They may want to do something special. Um, I know, like in basketball, they may do, somebody got 
3,000 points or something to stop in the middle of the game. But um, if they want to do that, give them that allowed time um, doing intermission, um, at least five minutes. Sometimes it may take a little bit longer, but just give them that time. But if it's nothing like that going on, only give them three minutes. Do not say, you know, they may say, well, it's in the book that you can get five minutes. Give them three minutes. Three minutes. Um, number two, implementation, um, implement, implementation of solid color uniform top. This is just basically, um, and I don't think we had a problem here um, in our area with our schools, but for the most part, just making sure that um, uh, wearing a solid uniform top by either the libero or teammates is required um, July 1st this year. And basically just so you can tell the um, uh, difference between the two. So just make sure that the libero's uniform is not coinciding with <coughs> the other players. So you can, you can definitely tell the difference. That's pretty much what that is talking about. Um, Number three, improving communication between the second referee and the table officials. <clears throat> uh, sometimes we, I guess, and I can just speak for our association, we may take that um, second referee or R2, whatever you want to call it, for granted. But that R2 or the second referee is definitely important in that crew. Um, you do want to have a pregame with your table. Um, you can get to a match and usually you got kids there. Um, some schools you go to, they got parents and it's usually like some, sometimes the same person. But a lot of these schools, they got kids there, especially when we first starting off. Um, you want to kind of, you well you want to do it every game, but you want to have a pregame with your table. Um, you want to talk to them to make sure um, got both books there, you, mainly the home book. Um, you want to make sure, talk to them about your cell phone. Put them away. You see them up there, just let them know you can't have that during the match. Um, yes, sir. But please, don't take nobody's cell phone. And it's happening. Somebody's cell phone. Don't take it away from them. Just ask them to take it off the table, please. Thank you. Yeah. Um, if that don't work, replace them. That's it. So you, you truly want to, you know, go over your table. I mean, go talk to your table. Um, prior to the start of the match, the second referee should meet with the table officials and assess their level of experience, ask questions on how each person will carry out his or her responsibility and how communication will occur. The second referee may need to guide each person through responsibility so all are covered and the means for the communication is clear. Um, during the first set, the R2 should listen and observe how the table officials are carrying out their responsibilities as well as communication. Um, truly, when we when a match is going on, um, something I do is turn around to make sure during <coughs> a few points going on during the match or during the set, I turn around and ask, you know, it's a 7-6, seven, 7-6, six, seven, six, and just, just kind of check with them. Um, make sure you communicate with them and they're paying attention when we're doing the substitution. Um, sometimes they be like, who, who was that? Who just came in the game? Who just came? You get, you get your table to miss substitute because they're back there talking. Um, make sure, and this is a problem we have too, and I know that's probably everybody experienced this. You may have more than the timer and the two scores at the table and a libero on track. If you got more than that, get them away from the table because it's too much playing, it's too much talking. Somebody may be saying, well, I'm training her or whatever. No, just say not, 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 in, not in my match. Um, they need to do that during the scrimmage um, because that is a distraction. Um, they're missing substitutions, and that will be crucial if um, somebody goes over the substitution allowment or you know, what we about to go over, you got the wrong person going in for the wrong, you know, wrong number for the wrong number, and it could be a mess. And now you got to backtrack and all that. 
And that's why we keep our lineup card, which we'll be going over. But you just want to make sure your table is good. A good table can make it, you know, the match go real good, can flow real good. So make sure you have good communication with your table. VW. Yes, sir. You may want to remove the candidate and not the trainer. So, I'll say that again now. You may want to remove the candidate and not the trainer. Let the trainer stay there because the trainer knows. Well, okay, I see what you're saying. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I, I don't know who training. Yeah, you're right. You just find out. But that's why you get that straight before you even start. Find out if you got more than the allowed of people at the table, find out who is who. And my thing is, you can tell them, you know, and it's up to you. You can stay here as long as you're paying attention, but there's that one time you're not paying attention and y'all talking, one of you got to go. Just simple as that. So like I said, that's, that's why it's really important to get that clear before, um, before your game even starts. You won't have that. Um, on page 52, and I'm going to just jump down to, uh, to number five, the substitution procedures. Um, oh, yeah, thank you. Going back to that um, real quick. Uh, just remind me of something. They cannot cheer from the table. They cannot group their team on. They cannot. Um, and I know we have one problem, and I believe maybe <laughs> this this school here. Um, but cheering and, and and trying to tell the, tell the girls to go here. You missed that ball. Come on. They they just let them know you cannot do that from the table. And just politely, if it keeps going on, just let them know that they can be removed from the table. They're part of the officiating crew. That's it. Yep, that's it. That's why I, was, that's, I can't stress it enough. It's good to have a, a, a good pregame with your table and let them know that stuff up front. Um, cause we're going to go over the lineup card. But number five, substitution procedure. Got, during the question, Bruce. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Jenny. Just a thought. I know you're not trying to be persnickety. But um, it, it will help if we just remind the R1s that as R2 is trying to communicate with that table, to just back away, back away from the table, so that the R2 can do that without extra conversations taking place during that time. Because there have been some times when I'm trying to talk with the girls, and the R1s want to get in the middle of everything, and you want to say, and I, I need to be R1 at that moment and do what I got to do. Instead of social Right. Just the So just make sure, and, and we we <coughs> made it on the next clinic, but truly R1 has responsibilities, or the first referee, and, R, and the second referee has responsibilities, and they're broken down into, I mean, they're broken down in the rule book. So let's just try to, I guess, stay in our lane. <laughs> First referee, do your responsibility. Second referee, do your responsibility. And I think we'll be safe on that. Um, number five in here, substitution procedures during a timeout. I think we've been doing this all along, I thought. Um, but I guess it's a point of emphasis. Um, if a substitute comes up to the table, um, doing a timeout, do not bring in that substitution until after the timeout. Let the, the ladies get back on the floor in position and then beep beep, do your thing, back in, back in the table. But you can bring a substitution in right after a timeout. If they got them up to the table before the R1 or the first referee um, blows the whistle for the serve. Um, if it's done before that time, yes, you can bring in a substitute um, right after a timeout. Just make sure they're in the substitution zone and bring them in. Just go through the same procedure as if the match was actually being closed at that time, not after the timeout. Uh, everything is the same. Whistle, wave them in, all that stuff. No dead ball substitute. Uh, no dead ball substitute? Dead ball substitute. Well, the ball is dead. Play is dead. <laughs> but timeout has been called. After the timeout, 
before a player enter, they must go through the same procedure as it would if they were playing. Ball can be dead when they go in and enter. <laughs> You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't substitute until you blow your whistle, man. You know that's that that dead the ball. Yeah. This is okay. Thing. All right, here you go. Do your proper procedure, your proper mechanics after the timeout. Guess what? Blow your whistle. Wave them in. Make sure they're recorded and everything. Ball is still dead, but just still do. Problem can. I see what you're saying. <coughs> any other questions on, on any of that? All right. Um, we're going to go right into um, the line of car. Uh, and if you guys got any questions, I know it's kind of small. You should have wrote it a little bit bigger. But hopefully you can see. I'm trying to add See. Um, who used the wheel in here, Seth Francis and Shelton? Anybody else do that? Yeah, I think Miss Jenny got her own card. I think a few of those people are using Jenny's card. Majority of you use a index card, right? I use that. I use that. Yeah. That's what I use. Whatever works for you. Whatever works for you. Whatever works for you. Whatever works for you. Well, the, main, the, the main the main thing is what I'm what I'm the part I'm gonna go over is um, this is once again beginning of a set and they you know going on the court and the um, second referee is gonna go out and check it um, and I'm gonna go over the the lineup cards the starting lineups for that set these are just basically I'm just gonna go over these. This is what the teams are going to give the table. <coughs> Arthur is going to go over the line of card, but everybody should have some type of line of card. Um, officials, we should have some type of line of card. Um, and we might skip over something and go back to it. So at this point in the match, we shouldn't be in here. We should have had other stuff like pregame, all that stuff. We're going to go, go over that later. Okay. Um, main thing, make sure the team's line of cards are in, if it's between six, when should they be in? What, what's the time? <laughs> two minutes. Two minutes. One minute. One minute. Okay. No, 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 no I've seen some of our officials, when they start the pregame, walk up to a cook, need to line up. Don't ask them for the pregame and uh, you'll line up in that five, first five minutes. You know, They still have the allotted time. Don't do that. Just wait until the, it's, you got the time until the end of the pre-match to get that uh, line-up party, line-up sheet in. All right, um, basically, uh, this is the court. This is going to be the serving side, the receiving side. I just scribbled through here. That's, that's, that's a net. That's a net. We ain't never checked that one. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't check the height on that. <laughs> All right, um, basically, this is the receiving line of car, and this is the serving line of car. And I know it's kind of small, so it, uh, hopefully you guys can see, some of you can see it. But basically, when they give their line of cards, they're going to give it the serving order, not the lineup on the court. Remember that. They're just giving the serving order. Serving order. This is, Arthur's going to go over what our card should look like. But this is what they're going to turn in. So basically, on the, on the receiving side, their first server will be 18. Second, well, second one's gonna be um, without. I'm just gonna say, server is gonna be 18. Then in the two position, gonna be six, which is gonna be the captain. Usually they should be putting the C beside it. It's gonna be the captain. Number in the three position, number 12, four position zero, five position 33, six position number three. On the serving side, the first server in the first position is gonna be number two. The 
Samuel 16, which is the captain. Number three, I mean, excuse me, third position, 14. Fourth position, 13. Five position, 22. Sixth position, 15. All right. Now, once we get that, <coughs> we got that in. Now I'm going to turn it over to Arthur. The ladies are on the court. And what do they do from there, Mr. Harris? Y'all excuse my writing. I'm not all that proficient in writing. But this is the line of card. This is the service side. So it should be what? 2, 16, 14, 13, 22, 15. Those are star players on that side positioning, right? right? Now, this is what I do to help me. When I get to my receiving side, I ask the book to tell me who the first serve. And when I write them down, I start reading. I go 18, 6, 12, 0, 33, and right there. Oh. That's going to be the first serve code. 18 is going to start up in the second spot. These cards should be like they're on the court, but you know who, who serves first, right? All right. All right. Substitute. 8 for 2. These are my starters. All right. Anything wrong with that side of that card? In case you all know. All right. I'll tell you what's wrong. <laughs> two, two of my starters 16, 14, 13, 22, 15. Those are starters. Now, some people don't put them in the numbers that I do, okay? All right, first, in the number one spot, eight went in for two. Ten for eight. Two for ten. Fourteen for two. Everything good so far, right? Everything good so far. You ain't got that number. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody agree with that? Nine for sixteen. Four for nine. Twenty-five for four. Eight for twenty-five. Eight can't go You feel good? So y'all see all the rotation, right? So what's wrong with my card? So we should have had some stoppage in place. Prevented officiating, that would never happen. You know, if you try to stop. So where are, where are the wrong? Who's wrong? 18, 14, 12, 14, 14. No, that's 14. No, that's 14. It's just a. Right. Yeah, eight, 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 eight can't go in there. So they eight, 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 eight cannot go in for 16. <coughs> so eight can't go in the second one. So eight, all right. Eight, five. Eight, five, right there. Right. All right. Can't go there. There you go. All right. What else? Number three. four, 16 can't go in for. Uh, um. 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14